There's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a standing Friday read. Standing by my open curtain because there's some natural light. And this is my best side. <laughs> you can't see this side. I don't know. I'm just going to go with it. It is what it is. So, uh, lots to tell you. I've had a Sean week of reading. I have finished uh, two books this week. The first one is a collection of short stories from an Australian writer. This Taste for Silence by Amanda O'Callaghan. This was a buddy read with Heidi of My Reading Life. And we read it over about six weeks or more, I'm not sure. I gave the first story in the collection an honorable mention in my Besties and Worsties of 2019 as one of the very best short stories I read last year. And the other thing that I want to start my comments out by stressing is that Amanda O'Callaghan, on a sentence-by-sentence -sentence level, is an amazing writer. There were so many sentences, I think I quoted her about three times in my Sunday sentences, so she writes a good sentence. The bad news is that I didn't really end up enjoying very much else about the collection other than the wonderful writing and that very first story. So it was a three-star read for me. I didn't hate anything, but I especially didn't like the, what do you call them, microfiction or flash fiction. There was one or two at the beginning where I thought it was enough to create an intense emotional atmosphere and then after that, I felt all of those fell flat for me. And I didn't really care too much about any of the longer stories. So I think Amanda O'Callaghan is an exciting writer, one who I intend to follow, but this was a bit of a miss for me. Many other people loved it. Go to this book's Goodreads page. There are other booktubers who have absolutely loved it. So this is just one uh, less enthusiastic voice, but very enthusiastic about Amanda O'Callaghan's future. So that happened, and just about an hour ago, I finally finished this 700-page biography of the Pankhursts, The History of One Radical Family by Martin Pugh. This started out as a buddy read with Britta Bowler, but she got so irritated with me. No, I, maybe she did, but I'm teasing. Uh, I was wanting to slow down and slow down, so I finally released her from the buddy read, and she finished it some months ago. And I finally finished it today. I have talked about this a few times and told you that it would often take me 10 or 20 minutes a page because I was Googling this, that, and the other thing. And that process, it's probably a three-star book, but it was a four-star read for me because I enjoyed all the supplementary rabbit holes I fell down, and I will be doing a full review. But yeah, this, this was a really interesting book about an even more interesting family. I think better books could be written and probably have been written about the Pankhurst, but this was a very memorable introduction to this family of suffragettes that just were larger-than-life personalities. So more later on that. And when I said I was having a Sean week of reading, I... Uh, what I really meant was I bailed on two booktube darlings, two mammoth tomes, one of which I had started reading late last year. I bailed on the overstory. It got to that point where several commenters, several reviewers, several booktubers said that the book lost its way, and I agree completely. The opening third, or how far did I get? 40%? No. I got to page 204. Of a 500, yeah, I got about, I don't know, whatever that is. So I got quite a ways in, and at about, by about page 150, what had been a collection of on, of separate short stories introducing the characters and their various connections or lack of connections to trees, Powers starts to bring them all together in ways that just made me want to puke. I mean, it was just new age crap. I just couldn't stand all that. No, 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 no. So, no, not for me, uh, but I enjoyed what I read. And what I read was, he went in a completely different direction that I would have had to, you know, smoke a lot of peace, wacky tobacco or something to follow because it was just making my skin crawl. All these people that had visions of what they should do to save the world. We need those kind of people in the world. But I don't want any of those kind of people in my fiction. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was just horrible. But lots of people enjoyed it, including didn't it win 
a Pulitzer or something, but not, not at all for me after the first 150 pages. And I also didn't get much further with Duck's Newbury Port. This is not a Sean book. I said my initial reaction was positive and I said the fact that didn't, that I had completely assimilated it so I wasn't even noticing it, well that didn't last very long. I got to page 96 and I couldn't stand the fact that I didn't like the main character, I didn't think very many of her thoughts were interesting enough that I could suffer through another 900 pages of them. And the wordplay, really, I mean, I like wordplay, I'm a punster, but every page was just, every time she'd hear a, think a word, she would just make a list of words that sounded similar, and that got so cloying and annoying that I just, no, not for me, obviously a book for many other readers, and I certainly don't think it's a terrible book, it's just definitely not a short book, I'm so glad to put this to one side. I'm Now I'm worried I'm going to get it for the book two prize judging. Is there a god? So because I got some duds out of the way, I have brought a bunch of new stuff in. One of my plans, if I have a plan, I don't like talking about plans or making New Year's videos or any of those kind of stuff. It's just no, not my style. But here I am referring to a kind of an inchoate plan I have, which is to always have a tome on the go. So I replaced the Duck's Newbury Port with this tome, The Eighth Life by Nino Harachvili, translated from the German by, it should be on the cover, and it's not, by Charlotte Collins and Ruth Martin. And so this is also will be part of my Read German Books challenge. I am 30 pages in and I love what I've read so far. Now I loved what I've read so far on Ducks Newburyport, but this is a very, this is a standard story. This is a saga. This is like there are characters and there's no stream of consciousness and no trees that ca cause new age awakenings in people. So this is, I think, going to be a Sean book. I'm really intrigued by what I've read so far. The writing is weird. It's very emotional in kind of a drama queen way, and I'm not sure how that will play out for me over the longer term, but I, I think it will be okay. The story is starting out fascinatingly. I don't know, does anybody know if Eric ever finished it? I, I, don't, I can't find any evidence that he has, but it was him starting to read it that brought it kind of onto my radar. I knew about it, but didn't know much about it, and so now I've started it, and I will let you know how it goes. I have also started Margaret Verbal's novel, Maud's Line, which was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. And I definitely wanted to read something by some people that weren't white and male, and this one fits the bill. It's starting out really good. It is set in 1928 among a bunch of characters from the Cherokee tribe in, did I say where it was? In eastern Oklahoma, and it's quite charming so far with a lot of violence as well. So it's definitely holding my interest and I am about 50 pages in. I'm really liking it so far. Just to keep a modicum of respect coming my way from Memento Mori, I started Thomas Hardy's Far From the Matting Crowd and I'm really, really enjoying this. I am about 40 pages in. I'm doing this as an audio text combo. I found a audio narrator that I really like. I can't remember his name. I will put it here or in the show notes or something. But what's really interesting, I haven't read the introduction, but there is a lot. I see in the introduction and in various appendices, much is made of the various versions of this novel. And the version that I'm reading textually, this Penguin Classic edition, is not the same as what's on the audiobook. So that is adding a layer of fascination to the process because sometimes sentences are removed, sometimes adjectives are switched, Sometimes, you know, big changes or small changes, and I'm really having a good time following all that as I read, but I'm re just enjoying the story so much of Farmer Gabriel and the enigmatic Bathsheba. The erotic playfulness of this so far is reminding me of Under the Greenwood Tree, but it's this is already feeling a fair bit darker, which I like. So I'm feeling back in the saddle with bathing and finding new stuff and that just keeps my reading life fabulous 
and I'm predicting at least one more bail in the coming days, but I'm also trying to at least pretend to be optimistic that it won't be a bail. I also want to keep a non-fiction book on the go this year, so finish one and start another, and I had set aside a kind of survey of Indian history book. I had bought it, obviously didn't do enough due diligence at the time. I think I just looked at the Goodreads rating and it wasn't bad, but I acquired A Brief History of India, a translated work by Alain Danielou, Danielou, and then I, just as I was about to start reading it today, I did check out a lot of the reviews were saying it was not an introductory type of book and it was the earlier sections were just lists of people's names with not enough explanation and I just thought no 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 that's not for me so I did some due diligence and instead of that I will be starting today or tomorrow one that I think will fit the bill John Kay's India a history 700 pages or something I have it on scribd as an ebook and that one has gotten better reviews as being an introduction to the history of India, which is exactly what I want. I also looked at Nehru's The Discovery of India, which is kind of his survey, apparently beautifully written, about the early history, maybe up to the end of the 19th century. I don't know where he cuts it off, but he wrote it when he was in prison, and it has rave reviews, and I bought the Kindle version because it was three bucks, and then I started looking at it, and the typesetting was completely off. Like, there was one word in every paragraph that the word was split into two words just as a typographical justification thing. Once every paragraph, that was going to drive me crazy, so I, can, I returned it immediately, and I will consider getting a paper copy of it. That's the first time that's ever happened to me other than classics. Sometimes you get a classics ebook and the typesetting's off. The copyright's gone, so they just do a quick scan, copy and paste ebook, and they don't proofread it. But this one was a Penguin classic. So I will be starting those and perhaps others, but I haven't decided because another plan for this year is to be a lot more spontaneous about what I start to read. I'll keep you in suspense because I'm keeping myself in suspense, but I am feeling really pumped about my reading life. And may it continue for me and for you. Thanks for watching. Thank you.